watching for a friend where I watch movies and shows because I love them and let you know whether it's worth watching or not. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing me. I hope that you enjoy this video and stay till the end. If you're returning, thank you again for your support. Really appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoy this video as well. Today I have a special treat for you all. I'm going to be reviewing a web series that you can stream right here on YouTube and it's called Crescendo. Now before I get into this review and let you guys know why I think that it's worth a watch, I'm really excited about this series because the creator of the show, the filmmaker and screenwriter, is a black woman. Her name is Jacqueline Joyce Revere. I believe I'm pronouncing that. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> she is doing such great things with the series. I thought she did a phenomenal job with the writing and I found myself so invested in this series. The really cool thing about this series is that it all the episodes are less than 10 minutes so I was able to stream the entire five episode season in under an hour. So it is very engaging. She did a phenomenal job of the writing. The acting was wonderful and I thought they did a really great job of the casting choices. If you are a fan of web series like Awkward Black Girl, this is where you're going to get your fix. <laughs> this is a really well done series. I am so fangirling <laughs> over the writer of this series because she is doing it. And let me tell you, she's one to watch. She's one that you're going to want to support uh, moving forward because this is just the beginning for her. So I hope that you're able to see this Jacqueline because I'm such a fan of yours and I can't wait to see what you have next. You are going very far in this industry. Also, I am an aspiring filmmaker myself and an aspiring screenwriter. So this just lit a fire under me. I am so inspired to start doing even more creating outside of the YouTube space and this showed me all the possibilities. So thank you so much for creating this series and let's go on and get into why I think you should watch it. Crescendo follows Leah, a singing teacher at what I believe is either a community college or a college. I'm not 100% sure on that, but she is a successful teacher. Her students seem to love her. She's so successful at her job, in fact, that she's up for a big promotion. And this promotion promises a big pay boost, as well as some additional benefits, namely 20 weeks of maternity leave. Now, Leah's in a long-term relationship with her boyfriend, so Leah thinks <laughs> she's ready to take it to the next level. But in the first episode of the series, she gets a taste of performing again. She kills it on stage. She sings All I Do by Stevie Wonder. I love that they snuck that into the series because that's one of my favorite Stevie Wonder songs. She kills it. She does a phenomenal job and she just gets a taste of that spotlight again. And this makes her think that maybe she's not fully ready to settle down yet. Maybe she's willing to risk it all and go back to performing. Now, everyone in Leah's life, including herself, you know, believes that she's at the point in her life where she should be settling down, ready to have a family. She's up for this big promotion at work that she's pretty much guaranteed. And she's getting a lot of external pressure from her mate, her, her boyfriend, her best friend, her mother, even her boss is pressuring her to take this promotion and just settle down and stay away from the industry. And this is something that Leah is just not willing to settle for. <laughs> she, once she gets to taste that spotlight, she is ready to start moving forward with her singing career. Each episode follows her taking one step closer to trying to do some recording, trying to find a producer because her boyfriend used to be her producer, but no longer does, he no, he's no longer in production now. He's kind of a, a stay at home boyfriend. <laughs> oh, this is sad, but it's so real. This happens a lot. So anyway, he's a really earnest, and his name is Ernie. <laughs> Ernie is earnest, <laughs> and he really does love her. He really does support her in whatever she does, but he isn't, driven to do anything more and he just kind of like sits at home doing laundry all day and these are her words not mine <laughs> he sits at home doing laundry and just kind of like cheerleading her on and this is something that Leah uh, looks at and is like I don't know if this is the life that I want and the people around her allude to that she has switched 
her idea of what success means or what she wants to do quite a bit. So it seems like the people around her are a bit tired out on her, you know, changing her mind on what her future is going to look like. But you know what? <laughs> We're allowed to do that. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to do that. So she fills in her heart that this is her calling. She wants to move forward with singing. This is a point of contention with her family. This is a point of contention, especially with her boyfriend. So without giving too much away, I'll tell you what I really liked about this series and then a few small things that I like to see moving forward. So I really loved Jacqueline's ability to storytell here. Also, I'm not terribly familiar with web series budget, but I imagine it's not nearly as much as you'd like as a filmmaker. And I thought that they used the budget really well. I thought that the casting was amazing. I thought the production quality was really high quality. The music here was really good. I have watched so many feature films that are indie or have lower budgets and the music is always the big tell. <laughs> um, the music is always kind of generic or sung by somebody who's not very talented, whereas in this one, Nava Morris did a lot of the music herself and it was very good. I'd listen to it on Spotify. I have to look her up to see if she has an album or anything, but she's really, really talented. The music was good. The music was high quality. I appreciated that. The production quality was high. The actors were extremely talented and it was cast really well. So awesome job. And there wasn't much that I could find wrong with the series, but there were a few small things that when I reflected on it, I couldn't answer. So I'm going to talk about that right now. But the timeline was a little unclear to me. So when we start out the series, it, the first shot that we have is this news report of a of an industry mogul who has, you know, beat this woman who turns out to be Leah. She is all jacked up, black eye, you know, cuts all over her face and everything. So this is the first scene that we have. The next scene we see Leah and she's totally fine. I didn't see if there was a passage of time at all and that was confusing to me. She is, seems to be very happy in her life and you know we see her with her boyfriend it turns out that she and her boyfriend have been together for about 10 years they were in the industry together and they left together and what got confusing is everyone around her kept referencing that she had been in the industry before and that there was something an event or an incident that happened that made her and her boyfriend leave the industry and go to being regular again so I assumed that that was the issue, this assault case that she had, um, and she dropped the charges. But then, and his name is Magic, the guy that beat her up, uh, its name is Magic. Now, when we get to the very last episode, she gets a text from someone uh, saying, hey, do you want me to introduce you to Magic? And she was like, yeah, set it up. And I was like, oh, hold on. So they haven't met yet. Um, and so that was just unclear to me. What incident were they referring to before then? And so it's unclear whether she got beat, <laughs> left the industry and is now returning to the industry or whether there was a separate incident that they haven't told us about yet. She left the industry and she has yet to get beat. <laughs> so just the timeline was a little bit unclear to me. I'm going to go back and watch it again to see what I missed. Um, if you get a chance to watch it, feel free to let me know down in the comments because that's one thing that I was curious about. Now, the good thing is, is that it doesn't take away from the series at all. And I still enjoyed it. I still was able to follow along with everything else. It's just that timeline really threw me for a loop once I got to the end. So again, very, very small. Um, and I'm sure it will all be explained in season two, which they better get they better get a season two. Outside of that, I thought this was amazing. You guys go watch it. Like I said, the entire series can be streamed in under an hour. So it's a very, very easy watch. It's on YouTube. So you don't need a Netflix subscription. You don't need a Hulu subscription. You don't need Prime. You just go on your phone and stream this on YouTube. So again, it's called Crescendo. I will link it down in the comments and in the description box for you guys. So you can go right over there. I'm going to link you to the playlist. Thank you all for staying so in the end of this video and I will